College. I am from Bhutanese Refugee Camp in High Point and I'm also a public health fellow. Uh, so I'm here to share my story about my community and let me start. So let me take you all to the Bhutanese Refugee Camp in Nepal. So the picture on the side, it's a Bhutanese Refugee Camp in Nepal and this is my home where I was born and I was raised. And this is my grandparents. They are my grandparents, my aunt, and my cousin. They are still there. And living in the refugee camp, I had some great experience. And also, there were very um, bad experiences that I had. And uh, in the camps, we didn't have any uh, electricity or uh, good uh, environment, clean environment. And there were very basic health healthcare provided and when people were um, depressed or they had some mental problems then it was often taken as wrong um, some kind of um, not not really as a illness so um, let me take you all to food section so uh, this is the food plate of everyday um, Bhutanese family so we have rice some vegetables, small amount of pickle and soup. So, um, and this is like a special kind of uh, plate where we have this kind of plate in special event. And as we can see, there are, most of the time it's vegetables. So back in Nepal, in the camps, meat are very expensive. So people don't eat meat a lot, but we eat vegetables. But still, we have very uh, limited choices of vegetables in the camps. So um, this is a water tap, how we used to have um, like two times a day water access in the camp. And this is how we lived. And um, when people were coming over to the US and our food diet changes because there was more, up, uh, more choices, food choices, and especially uh, meat are cheap. So when Bhutanese refugees, they came over, then they they started eating more meat, and it was often uh, they often took uh, unhealthy food choices like soda or other beverages. Um, and also in the transition process, um, this is a picture of elderly Bhutanese in a citizenship class, where um, uh, they seem kind of sad and they are stressful. They are depressed uh, in the community because. Uh, because of not being able to uh, to have that social social support that they had in the camps, that they had um, they had co close relationship with the families and the friends in the camps, so they were worried about they are worried about um, not being able to speak uh, to everyone, make connections, and feeling very isolated. So. Um, they are scared of health costs and and it all contribute to mental health um, uh, mental health problem to rise um, so here it is the slide where um, this is the way how we try to uh, improve the health problems in the community um, we were working with the community people and uh, working with the American experts, mental health experts, to uh, connect, build the bridge with the community, and then bring the education, health education, nutrition education in the community. And um, one of the things that I learned is, as a community, we cannot do by ourselves. We cannot improve and improve the health problems and mental health problems just by the community, and also. Um, American experts, they cannot do by themselves. So the building breeze is the great way to uh, to approach toward that pro uh, to the, toward the solution. So uh, some of my friends from my school, international students, or uh, American students, we we work together and then we go to the community and then talk to people 
and talk to people about the opportunities they can have, education opportunities, and talk to elderly people and providing the uh, language transactions, uh, translations. So these all building bridges, that, that's how we try to approach toward the community and work more. So one of the uh, way and results that we had was we go to the community and uh, we bring the mobile market in the community and this is the picture where um, this is the um, uh, refugee apartment complex where American students or international students, students from college, we, we just go with fresh produce and then encourage them to continue their traditional like farming, it could be farming, and, and encourage them to eat more healthy stuff and also talk with them, have conversation and share uh, their cultural backgrounds, uh, talk about festival. So that way, um, refugees, they feel more comfortable, they feel welcome to the country, to the place. And it was a great way to break the isolation of the community. Um, and also, um, here is the class uh, where we did uh, it's in the senior resource center downtown where um, where we had a class to uh, class on how to reduce stress and we did meditation and it was a very um, it was a familiar thing to uh, introduce this um, good news elderly people about meditation to reduce the stress because um, people here they are from uh, Hindu background, Christian background, and Buddhist backgrounds. And so they were familiar because they worship in the morning and they close their eyes. So it was easy for them to add up these ways to reduce the stress and mental um, problems. Um, also, I want to uh, point out students and volunteers who were there. They were from uh, international. Uh, also, there were Americans, there were Burmese, people who look alike. So for them, it was much more helpful to, to be cooperate with them, to work with us and to listen, to feel relaxed, where they can actually learn. And it was really successful. And this is, um, this is an example of new thing that we combine with old thing, our old practices we used to have back in country. Uh, we teach about uh, where are the stress levels located in our bodies. And this is the new education exposed to the um, community. And they were very um, responsive and attractive to uh, what's going on. They were learning. And they were not uh, uh, fearful or ashamed of like, uh, like afraid of not, like, um, not having to be in an art position or something. Uh, so yeah, it was really helpful to just to connect with them. And um, so here is my last slide. And this is the, um, at the end of that class, we had some music and dances. And this is the point where, um, where we can see the diverse people, even in that classroom, we were able to um, socialize and bring that uh, social support that was lost when uh, refugees come over to the country. And as we can see, like they were happy, they were dancing. And I don't think we can see this picture in the, um, in the um, ESL American <laughs> school or college uh, we have in community college. I didn't think that uh, people, witness people will be able to like laugh or smile or speak in front of people, but taking this approach uh, working with the community, building bridges, working directly with them could be a very effective way to, um, to, um, to improve the root cause of the mental, uh, mental illness and issues, health issues. Um, so uh, at the end, I'm done with my slides. <laughs> so uh, for the takeaway message, it's um, I want you all to understand that it is possible to work directly with the community and it is 
it is very effective because <laughs> I am from the Vietnamese community and I know like most of the time I'm the person who knows I'm the person who knows what's going on in the community. Uh, there are people who talk to me and then tell me about they were able to share what's going on in their mind, what's going on in their family. So it's often it's a it's a very for the takeaway message. I just want you all to understand that it is possible to uh, work with the community directly to improve and to work toward um, solving the mental. Uh, mental health and just wellness of the community. Thank you.